This fourth series is a compilation of Mr. Nakamura's experiences while working for a company and is the TPM that he introduced to the industrial world as a full-time lecturer at JMA and has been promoted and achieved results in many companies. I will now introduce the main points of this picture book. I hope that this, along with the previous series, will be useful to readers. This picture book, like the previous series, is a project activity in which a hypothetical company A asks three people to consider ways to effectively implement TPM in the company. This diagram shows a management meeting, and the gist of it is that the situation is as follows. A company gathers information about TPM, which is abundant in the industry, and conveys to one of the three people the policy to organize the optimal TPM deployment for the company A, in the hope of considering ways to achieve results quickly and effectively in the company. In the 1980s, the industrial world was in an uproar over the fact that Japanese industry has finally caught up with the productivity of top European and American companies. At that time, the late JMA chairman, Mr. Totoki, showed this research material to the industrial world. As you can see, at that time, the productivity of Japan, which had state-of-the-art equipment, was less than half that of top European and American companies. This research and the sense of crisis became the starting point of TPM in Japanese industry. The first step of TPM is 5Ss of equipment. This problem was the cause of equipment breakdowns and slowdowns. The proof of this is that reliability engineering has been put to practical use, and the late Mr. Masakata Nakaigawa has achieved great results in many companies, which is explained in detail in a picture book. Please take a look at this content in the picture book, and the effect is that, as shown in this figure, 5 S's of equipment, which is promoted through daily improvements along with the development of awareness among on-site workers, will greatly contribute to equipment breakdown countermeasures. Some companies receive guidance from a TPM specialist organization that says, it is important to continue 5 S's of equipment for three years. However, this speed TPM is not based on that method, but on the procedure shown in the diagram below. Mr. Nakamura learned the basics from Ison Industries' zero breakdown countermeasures and created this procedure. I will introduce a part of it in the following diagram. This figure shows step 3 of this TPM. Step 1 involves carrying out the 5 S's of equipment, but repeating this is a wasteful act that has no bearing on product manufacturing. Therefore, after first removing the cause of forced deterioration, step 2 moves on to addressing the source of the waste and dirt. After going through this process, we arrive at the measures shown in this figure, but this example shows how great the results of self-maintenance, where workers on-site learn about the structure of the equipment and take measures, can be, along with addressing the source of the problem. Furthermore, this picture book also includes examples of TPM in practice that Mr. Nakamura improved and sped up, and the results, so please take a look. When TPM carried out through on-site participation reaches its limit, measures for the basic configuration of the equipment, which is called the equipment design stage, will be necessary in the future. This figure shows an example of such a measure, and here is the content of equipment specialist staff utilizing FMEA, which is explained in detail in the picture book. With such measures, the key points of TPM practiced by Ison Industry, which has been used as a model by many Japanese companies, are introduced in the picture book, and at the same time, the key points of speed TPM and the development of personnel who are strong in equipment are also introduced. The people working in the manufacturing industry are both people and machines, but safety measures are a prerequisite for human work. If work safety is not ensured, not only will the company be heavily criticized by the labor union and other related parties, but it will also lead to situations where employees leave the company. However, could the lack of a labor union be a factor in the lack of hazard prediction training measures for equipment? 
With these questions and measures in mind, Mr. Nakamura proposed this analysis method and has applied it to each company's breakdown countermeasures, striving to create equipment that does not break down. Here, there is the use of pokayoke, but in recent years, the picture book also introduces examples such as the use of measuring equipment, which has evolved significantly. Once we proceed with TPM up to this point, we will be cultivating human resources who are strong in equipment. In other words, knowledgeable about equipment as advocated by TPM as shown in this figure. The purpose of promoting TPM this time was, after all, autonomous maintenance and hazard prediction training measures with the participation of on-site workers. The target audience, people who work on-site in manufacturing, are not expected to reach the level of experts in maintenance and maintenance. However, in the IoT era, there is a way to use the knowledge gained from TPM to participate in low-cost automation measures in the form of on-site proposals. To make it easier, faster, and more reliable to carry out your own work, so we decided to introduce those measures and examples in this picture book. The example shown at the bottom of this figure is an Eisen Seiki robot that transports intermediate materials between processes without using any motors or electrical energy. Energy conservation is currently one of the important issues in global warming countermeasures, and this example is an automated machine that perfectly meets that need. This kind of idea was also thought of in 1960 during the Edo period in Japan. This transport vehicle was developed based on that idea and is already an example that many companies in Japan have used as a model. Low-cost automation involves the development of people who are knowledgeable about equipment through TPM, as well as the technical knowledge that people who work on site have acquired. Therefore, in this picture book, we have introduced the contents of the research and considerations of the three-member project team in the form of a guide to how to use it like this example. The TPM introduced this time has been applied in many companies, and the situation is similar to the content shown in this figure. Therefore, in this picture book, we have summarized the situation in which the TPM implemented in the hypothetical company A was effective because the results of the investigation and examination were used sequentially as a representative example. This video introduction only introduces a small part of the picture books. For those who are implementing TPM in practice or reviewing their activities, we will provide information on where to obtain picture books on the sites introduced here. We would like to thank everyone who has watched this video introducing picture books on TPM countermeasures.